So Jordan questions the whole intent of the giver, of the helper. Maybe you're saving someone because you're a strong, generous, well put together person who wants to do the right thing. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's actually you. But maybe it's actually not and maybe you're actually lying to yourself. Jordan suggests it's also possible and perhaps more likely that you just want to draw attention to your inexhaustible reserves of compassion and goodwill. Or maybe you're saving someone because you want to convince yourself that the strength of your character is more than just a side effect of your luck and birthplace. Or maybe it's because it's easier to look virtuous when standing alongside someone truly and utterly irresponsible. Now this is an extremely uh, confronting thought to reflect upon you. I think when I first read it, you have to be extremely honest with yourself and this is obviously very difficult but something that Jordan tries to help people maneuver through and something he's helped me personally maneuver through. It's like facing the chaos and the demons and, and the devil as he would say within you. I definitely relate to the, the first and the last point. So the last point being maybe it's easy to look virtuous when standing alongside someone utterly irresponsible. I relate to that. I've felt that before. You know that 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 feeling when you maybe you try and help someone who is utterly irresponsible and, and maybe doesn't share the similar character traits that make you uh, unique or or productive and and a, and a maybe a, a valuable member to society. But by standing alongside this person, it makes you feel better about yourself. Uh, and this is something I've probably done before. Uh, but it's not productive in the end. It's kind of fake. It's kind of... It gives this fake sense of um, reality, this fake sense of uh, almost virtue, singling, virtue signaling to myself, kind of putting myself on this moral pedestal. Oh, look at me better than this other person. Look at me helping this person in need when I'm really just propping up my own self-esteem and, and, and fractured... Uh, uh, character but if you don't realize it's happening you how are you supposed to address it so i want to address it here you know so i can learn to be better if i can't admit it how am i going to change how's anyone else going to change and so this is really therapy for myself as well <laughs> a big reason why i do this jordan gives some more extreme examples of other people who may uh, resonate with this. Your raging alcoholism makes my binge drinking appear trivial. My long serious talks with you about your badly failing marriage convince both of us that you're doing everything possible and that I am helping you do my utmost. It looks like effort, it looks like progress, but real improvement would require far more from both of you. Are you so sure the person crying out to be saved has not decided a thousand times to accept his lot of pointlessness? and worsening suffering simply because it is easier than shouldering any true responsibility. Are you enabling a delusion? Is it possible that your contempt would be more salutary than your pity? People lie to themselves like this all the time. All the time. They compare themselves to someone of a more of an evil to them because it makes themselves feel better. As I kind of just alluded to in my own example, I do not have these... Uh, kind of I can't relate to the alcoholism or the addictions I relate to other things but the examples are present for so many people people will compare as, as blunt as it is they'll compare each other's shit it's like whose shit stinks more and they'll feel better that the other person's shit stinks more because it's like oh I'm not as bad as this other person but it's not productive at all. You're not moving forward at all. You're going backwards. You're staying stagnant. And yes, as he says, you're not shouldering any responsibility. It's, it feels like you are. It feels like you are by maybe helping this person have this conversation, but you're not. And people need to realize that. You're not shouldering any responsibility, and that's the problem. You need to face what's in front of you, as confronting as it is, as confronting as these rules and these these just words, these just collections of sounds, uh, as, as confronting as they are, you need to, to grow.